Hey everybody, welcome back to another reading of the Federalist Papers. I started 82 earlier today. I'm going to finish 82. And then in the next video, I'm going to try to finish the last three um, papers. Okay, so here we go. This is where I left off. But this doctrine of concurrent jurisdiction is only clearly applicable to those descriptions of causes of which the state courts have previous cognizance. It is not equally evident in relation to cases which may grow out of and be peculiar to the Constitution to be established. For not to allow the state courts a right of jurisdiction, jurisdiction in such cases can hardly be considered as the abridgment of a pre-existing authority. I mean not, therefore, to contend that the United States in the course of legislation upon the objects entrusted to their direction may not commit the decision of causes arising upon a particular regulation to the federal courts solely, if such a measure should be deemed expedient. But I hold that the Senate court, excuse me, the state courts will be divested of no part of their primitive jurisdiction further than they may, they may relate to an appeal. And I'm even of opinion that in every case in which they are not exp expressly excluded by the future acts of the national legislature, they will, of course, take cognizance of the causes to which those acts may give birth. This I infer from the nature of judiciary power and from the general genius of the system. The judiciary power of every government looks beyond its own local or municipal laws and in civil cases lays hold of all, of all subjects of litigation between parties within its jurisdiction, though the causes of dispute are relative, relative to the laws of the most distant part of the globe. Those of Japan, not less of New York, may furnish the objects of legal discussion in our courts. When, in addition to this, we consider the state governments and the national governments as they truly are, in the light, in the light of kindred systems and as parts of one whole, the inference seems to be conclusive that the state courts would have a concurrent jurisdiction in all cases arising under the laws of the Union where it, it was not expressly prohibited. Having another question occurs, having another, another questions here another question occurs. It says questions plural, I think there's a typo there. Here another question occurs. What relation would subsist between the national and state state courts in these in these in these instances of concurrent jurisdiction? I answer that an appeal would certainly lie from the latter to the Supreme Court of the United States, the SCOTUS. The Constitution, in direct terms, gives an appellate jurisdiction to the Supreme Court in all the enumerated cases of federal cognizance in which it is not to have an original one without expression to confine its operation to the inferior federal courts. The objects of appeal, not the tribunals from which it is to be made, are alone contemplated. Con contemplated. From this circumstance, or from the reason, and from the reason of the thing, it ought to be construed to extend to state tribunals. Either this must be the case, or the local courts must be excluded from a concurrent jurisdiction in matters of national national concern. National concern, or else the judiciary authority of the union may be ex eluded at the pleasure of every plaintiff or prosecutor. Neither of these consequences ought, without evidence, evident necessity to be involved. The latter would be entirely inadmissible, as it would defeat some of the most important and avowed purposes of the proposed government, and would essentially embarrass its measures. Nor do I perceive any foundation for such, an, such a supposition, agreeably to the remark already made. The national and state systems are to be re regarded as one whole. The courts of the latter will, of course, be natural auxiliaries, auxiliaries to the execution of the laws of the Union, and an appeal from them 
will as naturally lie to, the tri to that tribunal which is destined to unite and assimilate the principles of national justice and the rules of national decisions. The evident aim of the plan of the convention is that all the ca ca causes of the specified classes shall, by weighty public reasons, receive their original or final determination in the courts of the Union. To confine, therefore, the general expressions given to confine, therefore, the general expressions given giving appellate jurisdiction to the Supreme Court to appeals from the subordinate federal courts, instead of allowing their extension, uh, allowing their extension to the state courts, would be in, to abridge the latitude of the terms and subversion of the intent, contrary to every sound rule of interpretation. But could an appeal be made to lie from the state courts to the subordinate federal judi judicatories? This is another of the questions which have been raised, and a greater difficulty than the former. The following considerations countenance the affirmative. The plan of the convention in the first place authorizes the national legislature, quote, to constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court, Section 8, Article 1. It declares in the next place that, quote, the judicial power of the United States must be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as Congress shall ordain and establish previously quoted. And it, and it then proceeds to enumerate the cases in which the, this judicial power shall extend. It afterwards divides the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court into original and appellate, but gives no definition of that of the subordinate courts. The only, outline, the only outlines described for them are that they shall be inferior, quote, inferior to the Supreme Court, and they, they shall not exceed the specified limits of the federal judiciary. Whether the authority shall be original or appellate or both is not declared. All this seems to be left to the discretion of the legislature, and this being the case, I, Alexander Hamilton, I perceive at present, to, at present no impediment to the establishment of an appeal from the state courts to the subordinate national tribunals and many advantages attending the power of doing it may be imagined. Uh, may be imagined. It will diminish the motives to the multiplication of federal courts and would admit of arrangements calculated to contract the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. The state tribunals may then be left with a more entire charge of federal causes and appeals and appeals and appeals in most cases in which they may be deemed proper instead of being carried to the Supreme Court may be made to lie from the state courts to district courts of the Union. So that's 82 part 2. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Next we will, we will attempt to read 83, 84 and 85.